you know, I got a really interesting comment in one of my videos. And I want you guys to listen to me. I am showing you how rich folks do things. I am not showing you poor people's strategies. And to prove my case, how does the stock market work? You have to have cash most times to invest in the stock market. You can invest in the stock market on margin, which could be risky because if your stocks go down, you will get what's called a margin call. So typically, the stock market is operating on cash. So these companies and these rich people are getting cash. And like I said, I got this comment. It makes sense to finance because of inflation. I think that is the stupidest thing I've ever read. You want to know why? I am 54 years old and inflation has been happening since I was born. Every one of us have experienced inflation. Every year, every decade, we all experience inflation. What is your hedge against inflation? Making more money! And I keep screaming this, but once again, I figured some stuff out. I'm like, most people do not feel that they can do something great. They will try and it won't work out and it'll be hard and then they'll give up. I am showing you the shitty part of the car rental business for a reason. Because when it turns, you can say, oh my God, it was trash in the beginning. Now he's making all this money. Here's the thing. Stop trying to play purported rich folks games. I saw a comment on Quora talking about billionaires financing their houses. All right. I want you to think, and a billion dollars is an incredible sum of money. It's a lot of money. The interest on a billion dollars. Let's say you had a billion dollars cash in an investment that yielded 7%. 7%. That's $70 million a year. You got passive income of $70 million a year, but you're financing a house. It doesn't make any sense. This is why I say the things I say, and this is why, like, many people on YouTube will purport that they're financing cars because their cash is over here working. I don't believe them. I believe that it's a false argument. Because I, hold on, I have a business. That's my investment. My business is my investment. So my investment is throwing off all of this cash so I can buy certain things. And next month, guess what? My investment is going to give me some more cash. So this whole notion of, and thanks shout out to the credit plug because he said, I don't believe him either because it's a lie. It is a fundamental lie. Look, just come up and say, I don't have the cash. There ain't nothing wrong with it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, you got a lot of people here on YouTube who have high incomes that allow them to finance a very nice life. And I don't really have a problem with that. I don't do it. I'm not going to do it. But if you choose to do it and it works for you, knock yourself out. But stop lying like you got all this money. Because you don't. That's one of the things that gets me. All of these people, on paper, they're worth a lot of money. But their bank accounts don't have a lot of money. Uh, I saw a YouTuber talk about how he became a millionaire, and he felt that he did not become a millionaire until he had a million dollars cash in the bank. And I actually feel that because there's an asset-based millionaire and there's a cash-based millionaire. Two different animals. I am more towards the cash-based millionaire because this Porsche, I paid 120,000. Went to the bank, dropped the cashier's check. It was no problem. Because when I pulled that 120,000 out of the bank, there was still a lot of money left in the bank. 
And guys, like that, that, that whole comment, inflation. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, you go ahead and you get a loan and your payments are locked in. So your, your payments are never gonna go up. However, your money is going to continue to go less and less far. Once again, I am 54 years old. Inflation has been going on since I was born. I don't worry about inflation. I don't think about inflation. You know what I think about? How can I get more money? What can I build? What can I create? How many people can I serve to get more money? That's where I think I'm not financing a car because I'm worried about inflation. That's a bullshit argument. Just go ahead and say, I'm financing the car because I don't have enough money to pay cash. Just go ahead and say that. That's more real. That's more honest. This whole notion that I cannot pull my money out of my assets because my asset, like, here's the thing. And once again, shout out to the credit plug. I think he's a really smart dude. He said the average person can make more money from a business than investments. I have been screaming that for 10 years. And everyone, see, here's the thing. When you say you are an investor, that makes you seem smart and sophisticated. I'm an investor. My money's working over here. And I have proved to you time and time again, time and time again, that you can outwork your money. Unless you have a lot of money, your money's not gonna make a lot of money. Your money's not gonna make a lot of money. So you invest $100 and you get a 300% return. Woo, 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 you got $300. You still broke, you still poor. Now, if you build a business, like I'm about to give you some facts. Now, I have spent half a million dollars getting this car rental business started. And that's the money that's invested in buying cars, that's taking advantage of the losses and everything, because September 1st, I am going to reset my car business. I'm gonna reset the car business. That's gonna be my first calendar year, and I'm gonna do a whole video on it. So, so far, last month, my returns was, 18,000. In this month, I'm probably going to do 22,000. Let's just say I continue to have issues and I don't buy any more cars and my business makes $24,000. Half a million dollars makes $24,000. You can have $160,000 in dividend stock and that would give you a so let's go ahead and say if you had 320, so if you had the same half a million dollars in dividend stock, you would get $3,000 per month. So I got half a million dollars invested in the car business and it's gonna give me $24,000 a month and probably in September, we're gonna be doing $30,000 a month because I've learned some new tricks. So. I can make way more money from a business than investments. I can make way more money starting a business with cash than I can financing and taking out loans. I am showing you guys this, and a lot of you, um, what my video was talking about, you know, it's a personal choice. I got a question for you. When you bought the house that you bought, was it a personal choice or was it based upon the limitation of your income? Because this is the thing, I don't think these guys are being honest. I don't think it's a personal choice. I feel that's the only way they could have got that car. They didn't have enough cash to pay for it. They just don't. And this is one of the things you're learning poor people strategies from people with high incomes who are playing a poor person strategy. Like, once again, I don't even worry about inflation. I don't even think about inflation. I'm like, inflation is gonna keep going on. In 10 years, your money's gonna be worth less in the future than it is today. This is inflation. This thing never stops. It's 
been going on that's been going on. So, I don't worry about inflation. I don't spend any time in uh, people's like, you know, buy gold and crypto to hedge against inflation. <sighs> All right. Let me explain something to you. The first time that I was, I saw a bank account with $200,000 in it that had my name on it. I felt rich. I wasn't a millionaire, but I felt rich. And what do I mean by I felt rich? At that time, anything that I wanted, I could have bought. Anything. Uh, I actually was thinking about buying some property in the West End. And I kind of wish I did because at that time, I could have bought a house for thirty, forty thousand, and those houses are selling for two fifty, three hundred, or four hundred thousand now. So that would have been a really good return on investment, on uh, return on the year investment ROI. But I felt rich, and I wasn't a millionaire. I just had very high cash flow. And honestly, if I wanted to be like these fake ass YouTubers and really flex, I could have a Lambo. I can have a Ferrari, I can have a Bentley, I can have a Lambo truck all up in my driveway. Because I've got the credit and income where I can finance all those vehicles. And have y'all drooling like, you got the Lambo, you driving the Rolls Royce Cullinan, ooh, ooh. See, I figured out something, a lot of y'all are spectators. You don't want to get on the field because you don't want to get hit. Mike Tyson said that everybody's got a plan until they get hit. And that's the thing. You don't want to take the hit. That's why you stay on the sidelines. And that's why you try to play what you feel are rich folks' games. Listen to me, and I'm not capping. I'm not bragging. I live in the wealthiest zip code in the southeast. I see rich people every day. And I'm, they're not doing the dumb shit that these folks on YouTube are telling you that they're purporting they're rich. When I went and toured that house, which was paid for in cash, because I saw all kinds of people, they just couldn't comprehend someone giving $3 million for a property. And they were like, you gotta check the property records. Fool, I checked the property records and there was no lien holder. Hello, that means they pay cash. And I had people challenge me, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because these people are punks. They're punks and pussies because they don't have the intestinal fortitude. They don't have the bravery to feel that they can do something great. So I'm like, I can't do something great. Therefore, no one else can do anything great. That's the, the whole thing. I had someone, and all these broke ass real estate investors who have no money talking about, I've been doing real estate. I'm like, fine, you've been doing low level real estate. Congratulations. You've been financing, because I, man, I am the apex predator. I have 23 years of business experience and I can dissect anyone's business with laser precision. I will chop that shit up. And you just a broke ass real estate investor. I know real estate investors who flip apartment complexes and they ain't broke and I'm talking about they be putting 10, 20 million down 10, 20 million down so I am used to dealing with folks who are operating and playing the game at a high level none of this Mickey Mouse romper room kindergarten bullshit on YouTube that's what you're getting you're getting kindergarten bullshit on YouTube I know a guy who's worth about half a billion. He owns several apartment complexes and half of them are paid for. I know, mind-blowing concept. A rich man having something that is paid for. They're paid for. This guy lives in a $5 million house. His wife don't work and his children go to private school. Dude's about 48 He's been doing this about 20 years. His wife is like 30 something. He got him a young tender. And I'm like, Mickey Mouse, romper room, kindergarten stuff. Like, 
I'm saying the things I'm saying because I want you guys to understand how to build real sustainable wealth. <clears throat> Let's say you're listening to me and you're 21 and you start a cleaning company and you enroll in the corporate papers and you learn how to hire and manage and grow your company, okay? You hire, you manage, and you grow your company. And you're 21. And let's say it takes you 10 years to have your first million dollar year. You're 31 years old with a million dollar company. You know how rare that is? I know on YouTube and Instagram, they make it seem like everyone's a millionaire, everyone's a CEO. I'm like, I guarantee you, because I'm getting ready to hire a private detective, and I'm going to start investigating people. Because I have a feeling once I have hired someone to do some investigative work, you're going to find out that these frauds and perpetrators are just that, frauds and perpetrators. Because one of the things that you guys don't have the privilege of seeing is real wealth. You get to see a facade of wealth. You don't get to see someone's like, well, all rich people, I know a bunch of rich folks who don't finance shit. They don't finance nothing. They cash and carry because they're multi-millionaires. They don't finance nothing. Like my friend with the apartment complexes, he uses financing. Uh, recently, he just did a $50 million deal where he had to put down $10 million. He had to put 20% down. And because he's been in the business for a while, the bank easily approved his loan because he's been doing this for 20 years. He knows what he's doing. And once again, and I'm going to have people get all mad and stuff because I am talking about their favorite YouTuber. He's giving them the sauce. Giving them a good game. They're giving you bullshit. They're not giving you any real applicable business lessons. Nothing that you can actually put into play and make money. They're doing this shit to get views on YouTube. That's all they're doing. It. They really are not trying to help you. They're really not trying to help you. And like this whole thing, you want to get ahead of inflation? Don't buy crypto. Don't buy gold. Now, funny, I have some gold. I got all the gold. I, I started stacking the gold when I was in the storage auction business because I used to sell it every month. I used to get three to five thousand dollars worth of scrap gold every month. Then I just started selling it, uh, stacking it. So I got some gold, but gold, in the grand scheme of things, unless you can buy a lot of gold, it's not really going to help you hedge against inflation. And with crypto, we've had this conversation before. Remember, I just told you I spent half a million dollars on the business that is producing twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a month. Twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a month. That's like a 15% return. Cash upon, cash upon, cash return. And when I get the business to $50,000, that's when we're going to be cooking with gas because this is my original investment. And when I get to $50,000, I won't be investing any more money in this business. This business will be investing in itself. That $30,000 will go to buy more cars, to increase the size of the fleet, to increase the revenue. So I can build a business in eight months that will give me more money in your dividend investment portfolio that will take you three or four decades to build. It will take you three or four decades to build a dividend portfolio that's going to give you three to $4,000 a month. And I can build a business that's going to create $50,000 in revenue in eight months. I'm trying to show you guys because, you know, I've been questioning why everyone's so excited about dividend investing. And are people that lazy? Are they that lazy? I don't know, because I'm like, it doesn't turn me on. And the reason it doesn't turn me on is I know from experience that starting a business makes you more money than investing. You know, everyone's like, get some investments, get some investments. Here's the thing with investments. 
unless you have a lot of capital to begin with, you're not going to get a bigger return. That's math. That's not attitude. That's not uh, huspa. That's not experience. That's math. You can invest a hundred thousand dollars a year for seven days, for seven years, and you won't be a millionaire. You will not be a millionaire investing a hundred thousand for seven years. A hundred G large. And there are people out here telling you that you can invest these ridiculously small sums of money and really get wealthy. It's a con job. It's a con job to get you to watch their YouTube videos. It is not helpful content. It's not teaching you anything. Because men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. And there's a guy called the, the Plain Banker. And he did the video talking about for you to retire in 20 years, you need to be investing $30,000 a month. Not $30,000 a year, excuse me. A year to retire in 25 years. $30,000. $30,000. So, once again, this whole argument, you know, financing to hedge against inflation is simply ridiculous. If you want to get ahead of inflation, make more money. That's going to hedge you against inflation like you wouldn't believe it. That is going to tremendously set you up for future success. Because the name of the game is to create more cash flow than you need. Many of you are just trying to create, you know, I'm not moving to Mexico because it's cheap. I'm staying right here in the good old United States of America. And I'm going to be 75 years old driving a Porsche. I'm going to be that guy. That will, the guy, he'll probably be 50 some. I'll be the guy who's like, what do you do for a living? I'll be like, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. I've been a YouTuber for 25 years, sonny. <laughs> YouTube. I'm part of the YouTube gang. <laughs> so, one of the things you guys have got to understand, if, you got, if you're worried about inflation, you need to build a financial device that throws off cash. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. And a lot of you are looking for complex or simple gambits where you can leverage $100 into $10,000. I'm going to tell you something. If you had the ability to turn $100 into $10,000 over and over again reliably, do you know you could become a billionaire? Because you can sell that process for 100K. If you had the ability to turn $100 into 10,000 on a reliable basis, let's say it took you a week to turn $100 into 10,000, that's $40,000 a month. That's $400,000. Uh, that's half a million dollars a year. You can sell that for 100K. If you could prove it works and do it, you can sell that for 100K. So that's why I laugh at all of these videos talking about you can start off with $30, which is true. You can start a business for $30. You could. But here's the thing. It's going to take you forever to level up. You could, and that's your position. That's all you got. Just get started. I would say get started. And start working on it. And I also would say get a full-time job get a second job. I met an interesting young lady who has a job and she's driving Lyft on the weekends because she wants to buy some real estate for Airbnb. And she's having a problem because everything is sky high. You know, she's got some money and she didn't want to use all her money for a down payment. I was like, look, you're going to need more money to compete in this market. And I told her, I was like, this market's not going to change for about two or three years. Once these people who are in forbearance and once we get back to a normal economy and when they start foreclosing on these people and foreclosing, I mean, it's going to be a five-year process because they're going to be so backed up. The courts are getting clogged with evictions right now. So you can't evict someone in 30 days. It's going to take you, I think, 90, 
90 days to six months to evict someone. So I told her, you know, keep doing what you're doing, save your money, keep your credit straight, and you'll be good. And keep, you know, nice young lady working on the weekends. She has a job. She's she gonna be somebody. She's gonna be somebody. And she's working on it, and she is showing wealth building behavior. Wealth building behavior is not watching a YouTube video that promise you that you can do all of this. That, I mean, I am so disgusted with the content I see on YouTube. I am so disgusted because most of it is bullshit. It's not going to help you. It's not going to make any money. It's just the reality of it. It's just not. So, what I want you guys to do is to start building businesses. This is what we're doing in the corporate papers. We're building businesses. We're building businesses. And once we build these businesses, because I want to turn you into a corporate citizen, and this is a person who owns a company or companies with a minimum revenue of $250,000 a year. And 250, like that's the level that I started to feel rich. That's the level that I could buy anything I wanted. That was the level that I really, really began to feel like a man. Because I could get married and support someone quite easily at 250. 250, my wife wouldn't have to work. You know, and when I started talking about getting married and building families. That's when the moist men came out. Never get married. Never have children. Win, 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 win. I am so scared. I am so scared to be successful. I ain't gonna marry some woman and she stick me for half my peanut butter sandwiches. That's all I got. I just got some peanut butter sandwiches. I don't have no wealth. I don't have no assets. I just got some peanut butter sandwiches. And you scared she gonna stick you for your peanut butter sandwiches. It is hilarious. I'm gonna start dropping some games in the corporate papers that's going to literally blow your mind. Literally blow your mind. Now, I'm not going to talk about it on YouTube because I, I will get in all kinds of trouble. So, but see, this is what you can do when you have your own private website. You can do what you want. And I'm going to start dropping some serious game because um, once we get through the data collection, because that's a very important. If you're not in the corporate papers, get in the corporate papers and be ready for the webinar. I don't know when I'm gonna drop this video. Funny thing is, I'm, I'm toying with the moist man who's like, he does three videos. I may drop this video today, and that will be three videos today. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm dropping videos. I'm dropping videos on your head, sucker. I'm dropping videos. Because, you know, every time I drop a video, I make money. But not YouTube money. I make B school for hustlers money. So I may release this video today and the training is tomorrow. And this is where we get into the real business building aspects because there's something called the marketplace. And the marketplace is brutal. Like, look at yourself. Like you go into a business and if they don't have what you want, what do you do? You leave. You don't go like, sorry, I gotta go. You just leave. Because they don't have what you want. The marketplace is like, give me what I want. And I will give you money. It's just that simple. It's just that simple and elementary. And many of you don't understand the marketplace from a business standpoint. You understand the marketplace from a customer service standpoint. Like, this is one of the things that happens to me all the time. I will have someone that will rent a car at 7.30 at night and they'll want to pick it up at 8.30. And I'm like, we're closed. All right, I got to cancel. That's the marketplace. I want you to understand. All adults in Atlanta know that the only place you can rent a car at 8.30 at night is the airport. That's the only place you can rent a car at night is the airport. And it's going to cost you more money because they're going to stick on airport fees. But for some reason, you got people, and I, I feel that you have people who feel that because these are owners, these are regular people who have extra cars, that they're desperate for money, and that they're going to take your request at 7.30, and they're going to meet you at 8.30 at night. 
Now, one of the reasons I have business hours is it's part of structure. Because if I didn't have business hours, I would have people renting cars at 6 in the morning and they want to pick them up at 6.30. I would have people renting cars at 11 o'clock at night. They want to pick them up at 11, 12 o'clock at night. So I have hours to convey a certain level of professionalism. And I have lost numerous people who rented a car at 7.30 and they wanted to pick it up that day. And also, I feel that I've avoided a lot of bullshit because, all right, you know you need a car. Why are you waiting to the last minute? <clears throat> Why are you last minute, Larry? Why are you waiting to the last minute? What I like are people who rent cars and pick them up the next day. These are people who are planning. These are proactive people. Like the clown that wanted the Mercedes and he was an asshole. I canceled on them. I'm like, I don't need your pro I don't need these problems with you. I don't need these problems. So I will cancel on someone quickly. Now, this is one of the things I hate about Turl. Fortunately, most people on Turl are nice, but when you cancel too many times on Turl, they hit you up with a $50 fee. <clears throat> they hit you up with a $50 fee per cancellation because Turl wants their customer experience to be really nice. So they try to punish you for not um, renting your car out to someone who wants it because it creates a bad customer experience, right? And this is the thing. Now, you cannot penalize Toro for not renting out your car. But Toro can penalize you for not renting out your car. It's very, very interesting because I was like, this whole policy where they, they, they want you to list your car on the Toro platform only, but they cannot guarantee that your car will go out X times a month. They cannot guarantee it. So. I'm gonna do what I want. And I've like had many people say, man, once Toro finds out they're gonna kick you off. Kick me off, so what? I'm moving toward independent. I'm moving toward independent anyway. Give me a year and I'll be fully independent. I'll still use Toro and hire car as long as it serves my need, but I'm moving toward being independent anyway. So I really don't care. And unless Toro, someone at Toro has all this time to scan all of these websites to look I don't think they're doing that. I feel, I don't know, I don't know. I haven't run up against it. But, um, like, the issue with the Porsche, I can't list the Porsche on Turo because there's a recall issue, which was fixed, and once that reports, then I can list that car on Turo. But in the meantime, I've rented it out four times on a car. So, you know, like I said, I'm the guy that's with the illegal legal. I'm gonna do what I need to do. I'm gonna do what I need to do to make money. I'm not going to, like, I don't play by the rules. <laughs> I've never played by the rules. That's one of the reasons I've been successful. I know how to dance between the raindrops and I know how to um, manipulate certain things. Like, I'm gonna tell y'all a strategy that I use in a hire car that works like a charm. And you, you need multiple cars to pull this strategy off because you've only got two or three cars. They may all be rented out, but I got a lot of sauce, a lot of game to give to the masses. And I'm probably gonna start that car rental course first of September, once I get around to it. Cause like today, it's a light day, uh, comparative to what Saturdays normally are. Cause I, I went to get the BMW, but the issue still persists. Cause they changed the cash in and the locks are still not locking. It starts the vehicle, but my fear is that the vehicle will go down the road and not start, and I'll be getting a call at 9.30 at night. So I left it with BMW. I picked up the Mercedes with the GPS kill switch. I got three of those installed yesterday. And um, yeah, I'm gonna look at some pricing objectives to get them moved, to get them in the higher car algorithm. Now, like, like I said, I got a lot of game to give you guys. I got a lot of things to teach you. And one of them I'm gonna teach you is how to build real wealth. So you won't be talking about, I'm a millionaire, but I'm financing cars. Every time I see someone who says that, and they're financing cars, my inner, my inner child starts giggling. I'm like, really? Why are you saying you a millionaire, but you gotta finance cars? Notice I said the terminology. You got to finance cars. It is not optional. It ain't optional. 
If I was one to hold on to my money and finance cars, I would be truly exercising an option because I really have the cash to buy these cars. I proved that last October. And, you know, if I wanted a Ferrari or a Lambo, there would be one in the driveway. But for me, and the, like, this this is me. This Porsche is me. I like this Porsche. So it could be a daily driver if I wanted to. There's just days I just decide I'm driving the Porsche. It's funny. One of the little things I do for myself is I don't do my own nails. I get them manicured. I get them cut. I get the dead skin clipped off. I do that once a week. It's just a little simple treat myself thing. And the girl, she's like, are you driving the red car? It's very interesting. I was like, I didn't even know that she noticed it. And I was like, yeah. Uh, last time I went there, I was like, I drove the red car. She said, I saw it. I saw it. I think she likes this car. Cute little Asian girl. Cute, 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 cute. And once again, I'm going to teach you guys how my goal is to get you to the point where in a few years, you're paying cash for your cars like I am. You're not out here with this financing bullshit. Now, understand, if you are financing a car because you need it and you want it and you can afford it, cool. But don't be running around talking about I'm a millionaire and I'm financing cars. I actually live, like Waka Flocka lives in my neighborhood. You think Waka Flocka financing cars? I was at the car wash with Waka and Waka was paying the guy and he pulled out a wad of cash. I guarantee you Waka Flocka ain't financing cars. I guarantee you um, Cordell Stewart lives in my neighborhood. I guarantee you Cordell Stewart ain't financing cars. I guarantee you Dr. J who lives in my neighborhood, he ain't financing cars. I guarantee it they're not financing cars because they're real millionaires. They're real millionaires. And once again, like I said, if you get a million dollars net worth, you've done something good. You've done something for yourself. You've built yourself some assets. Congratulations. That's a good thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying you can do more. You can be better. You can create more wealth. That's all I'm saying. And many of the folks out here are teaching you, in my opinion, poor people tactics trying to play rich. Waka Flocka ain't walking around talking about I'm financing a car. And Walker Flocker had a brand new uh, Cadillac Escalade. And I guarantee you, he walked to the dealership and he dropped that cash. I guarantee it. He ain't financing cars. I guarantee it. Theo Ratcliffe, who lives in my neighborhood, he ain't financing cars. I guarantee it. So I live in a neighborhood with real cash based millionaires. I see them every day. I see them in the grocery store, and I guarantee you they're not financing cars. I guarantee they're not financing cars. You want to know why? Because they got the money to buy whatever they want. That's why they're not financing cars. And this whole, like, back, shout out to Credit Plug, because he's like, I don't believe that people are financing cars because their money's elsewhere. They're financing cars because they want the car, and that's the only way they can get it. And just be honest about that. Just be honest. Don't be talking about, like, yeah, I'm so rich, and I got all this money over here, but I'm not going to take my money out of my investments to finance a car. I'm like, I, I, I just think that they're misleading you guys intentionally. They're just misleading you guys. So I want you guys to enroll in the corporate papers tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to release this video today. I'm going to pee on that little punk's head. Yeah, I'm going to do three videos in one day. Sucker, I'm going to drop these videos on your head. Because you ain't dropping no videos. You don't have no audience. You ain't making no money. <laughs> you ain't a, you a nobody. You a nobody. That's why you under, operate under a fake ass name because you are a nobody. Nobody knows you. No one cares. You're not even your mama. She don't even like you. She don't even like you. So, Go ahead, enroll in the corporate papers, and I'm going to do some stuff for the people who um, jumped into Hustlers Kung Fu. I'm going to send out some emails. Uh, I got a date tonight, <laughs> so I'm going to try to get all this stuff done before 7 or 8. Um, yeah, I got time. It's just 2.30. I'm going to drop this video. I'm going to drop some other stuff. I'm going to send out some emails. And I'm going to um, talk to you guys. So get.
get in the corporate papers and like tomorrow if you join after 4 30 you, you, i'm probably not going to be able to answer or send out that email stop waiting to the last minute start getting in stuff early start being proactive man stop waiting to the last minute because you're waiting on your greatness you're delaying your greatness because i feel that with my help you can be the best version of yourself you can be wealthy you can be happy i want you to imagine a life where every time you go to the bank there's more money in it every time you look at your account I want you to imagine that. Sit back and think, every time you go to the bank, there's more money in there than what you saw the first time. Because you have a financial device that is making you cash. Cash, 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 cash. You're not worried about inflation because you have a business that is making you so much money that inflation ain't even, I don't even think about inflation. Honestly, when I saw that comment, I was like, more poor people games more poor people games that's what that's about so go below get in the corporate toolbox i will probably corporate papers excuse me i will probably drop this late at night so you know, see how it performs late at night just to see because i was going to do a live stream but um i don't know i may drop this in the morning i may do the live stream i don't know i don't know i don't know I'm in, a, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a really good mood because yesterday was, uh, I got a lot done yesterday. And today I can sit back and work on my coursework and get that ready for 5 o'clock tomorrow. So we will be working on that. All right, so that's all I got for you. Go below, use the promo code AUGUST because September 1st, the price of the corporate toolbox goes up dramatically. And you wanna get in now, and I already know a whole bunch of people are gonna pile in on the 31st. Every time I do it, that's what happens. I, I might even make 100K that day. Seriously, that's how it goes. That's how I made 50K that one day. That's how I made 50K in one day because I had literally a whole bunch of people jump in the last day. So this year, it might be 100K in one day. We don't know, we don't know. But once again, we're gonna get into real training and it's a, if you're a beginner and you never had the business, this training is for you. If you are a seasoned entrepreneur, this training is for you because most of you don't have your businesses properly set up. You don't have you don't have an LLC. Many of you are don't even have a personal checking account. You're running everything out of the business account, which is wrong. You need to have two distinct, separate accounts. You need to have a personal account. You need to have a business account, and you you can transfer money because sometimes I'll just write a check out of the business account to my personal account. You know, I, I used to do that quite a bit. Not so much now since I'm now on salary. Um, but there are so many ways you can do this. So go below, use promo code AUGUST and get 50% off and beat the price increase because the price is going to go up. It's going to go up. So once again, go ahead and get in there. And I'm going to, uh, about to get off here. About to go in here and work on some emails and some specials. And I got to work on those t-shirts. Uh, my assistant has been reaching out, getting your address and size. September, we're already gonna print up some t-shirts of the hoodies. I think I'm gonna go with a hoodie because you know, September in a lot of parts of the country, it will actually start to get cool. So we're gonna go with a hoodie or a long sleeve t-shirt. So if you join the corporate papers, you're gonna get that. That's gonna be part of the deal. So once again, go ahead, 